Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, today we are going to discuss about certain alliances, certain groupings that have been launched at the COP26. Yes, we are going to discuss about certain initiatives that were launched at the COP26. I know that majority of you would be thinking, yaar, ye COP to khatam hi nahi ho raha. Of course guys, ye khatam hi nahi ho raha. Because every day I personally come across one or two news related to COP26 or the launches that were made or the packs that were signed at the COP26. But we don't have any other choice. We have to just know about all the launches and what were the major concerns that were addressed at the COP26 from our exam point of view and not only from the exam point of view, but from general perspective also, we should be the aware citizens that what the government is doing in relation to the climate change. And if you are the citizen of India, uh, basically Delhi, I, wish, I wanted to say Delhi, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata. So these are some of the cities that are highly polluted. So we are living almost in a gas chamber. So in that scenario, it is our responsibility also to be aware about the circumstances, about the situation, steps, actions taken by the government at the international forum as well as at the national level. So in light of that, I have brought to you this video where I will be discussing about all the initiatives that have been recently in the news because they were signed at the COP26 and the final documents related to them, basically the declaration document have come out now. Okay, so on that note, let's begin with the session. But before that, if you want to download the PDF of this session, then you can download it from the Telegram channel. And the link of our Telegram channel is in the description below. Okay, so on that note, let's begin. So the very first question is, which of the following countries is the first recipient of the Accelerating Coal Transition Program, which is also short formed as ACT? India, South Africa, Indonesia, Philippines, all of the above. So here the right answer is option E, all of the above. So India, South Africa, Indonesia and Philippines, all of these are the first recipients of this accelerated coal transition program. And as the name itself is suggesting that the basic purpose of this program is to help all of these countries in transitioning from the coal based fuel generation to clean energy. So that is the basic purpose. Now, the major task or the major issue that any developing or the low developing country faces whenever it wants to transition from the fossil fuel to the clean energy is the finance, obviously. So in order to tackle that problem, this program will help all of these countries. Now we are going to understand how this program will help all of these countries in tackling the issue of finances. So here the very first thing that you should be aware of, Achha, before moving into the details, do remember that all the initiatives that we are going to discuss today have been announced or launched at COP26 of UNFCCC that was held at Glasgow, Scotland. Okay, so that was the preliminary fact that you should be aware of. The next point here is that this program aims to help all of these countries and the developing countries. So these are the first recipients, but that does not mean that they are the last ones. Obviously, more countries will be included in this program. Now, it will help them to transition from the coal power to clean energy. These four countries have become the first batch because collectively they account for the 15% of global emissions from the coal. So this is a very huge contribution made by just four countries. Therefore, the focus is on them only right now. Next point is that this initiative is administered by Climate Investment Funds, which is an initiative of the world's major countries. So in 2008, major countries of the world decided, the developed countries decided to set up this fund that will primarily help the developing countries in mobilizing finance, in gathering funds for transitioning to clean energy. Okay, so the basic purpose of this is to help the countries in transitioning to low carbon economy. So that was, uh, that will be the way through which this program will help all of these countries that also includes our India. Okay, so this is a very basic point here that this program will help the countries in maintaining or keeping the temperature below 1.5 uh, 
degree Celsius. So this is just the ambition that has been stated here. Next question is, how many countries have formed the Boga Alliance? So 7, 5, 10, 20, 50. The right answer here is 7. So a total of 7 countries have collaborated. As you can see in the picture also, I will be discussing the countries as well. But first of all, understand that this BOGA alliance stands for Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance. Clear up from the name that they are going to eliminate oil and gas. So this is also another step towards clean energy by removing the fossil fuel resources that we are now using. Okay, so seven countries have formed this alliance and these seven countries are Denmark, Costa Rica. First of all, these two countries are leading this initiative. Okay, so these are the uh, main countries. Okay, France, Greenland. Greenland is basically a state of Denmark only. Do remember, but still we have provided or included it as the core member. Ireland, Quebec. Again, Quebec is a province in Canada. Sweden, Wales. Wales, we all know, is a part of the United Kingdom. So, the, in this manner, we have six countries here along with Italy and Italy is the friend of BOGA. So basically Italy is not a core member here. It has joined as a friend of this initiative. So obviously it will be supporting the initiative but it is just a way of referring to Italy that it is it has joined as a friend of BOGA and not as the core member. Apart from this there are three associate members California, New Zealand and Portugal. Okay I hope that you can remember the member countries and there is nothing much in this alliance from your exam point of view. By which year will the developed nations phase out fossil fuel vehicles? 2040, 2030, 2035, 2045, 2032. So here the right answer is 2035. Now I hope that majority of you would know that we are living in the decade of action. What is the decade of action? Can you guys elaborate on it in the comment section below? Do that please for me also so that I can know how well are you prepared for your upcoming examination because you can expect the notification at any point of time uh, of SEBI and RBI. Okay, so prepare yourself. Don't let your guards down. As far as this question is concerned, so can countries at the COP26 sign a pact that they will phase out the fossil fuel vehicles, okay, and adopt e-vehicles. So for the developed countries, the deadline is 2035, but for the developing countries, the deadline is 2040, okay. This agreement has been signed by 24 countries and do remember India is a part of those countries, okay. So India has also signed this agreement, but here also we have one loophole that the major the major car markets like we have US, China, Germany, they haven't signed this agreement. Again, the car manufacturers. Okay, so here remember that this agreement has not only been signed by the countries, but by the car manufacturers as well. So the major top two car manufacturers, Volkswagen and Toyota have not signed this agreement. So if the major car producer and the consumer, both of them are not participating in phasing out the fossil fuel based vehicles then how can we expect the world to transition to the cleaner fuels to transition to e-vehicles so that is one loophole that we are facing in this agreement right now but as far as the objective type facts are concerned so these are the facts that you need to remember from your exam point of view okay moving on to the next question which of the following statements clearly states the objective of Clyde Bank Declaration? So option A is the declaration aims, at aims to increase women's participation in the power sector. It aims to support the One Sun, One World, One Grid initiative. It will complement the phasing out of fossil fuel vehicles. It aims to create green and climate resilient infrastructure. It aims at greening of the shipping corridors. So here guys, the right answer is option E, the Clyde Bank Declaration. Now do listen to me very carefully. This declaration is very important. And the most important part of this declaration is that India has not signed it. 
although we are aiming to become a net zero emission country by 2070 but we are restraining ourselves from signing this declaration so what this declaration all about so let's discuss that first <clears throat> okay so let's go into the basics let me first tell you that Clyde Bank is not a bank it's a town in Scotland where this agreement or declaration was adopted 22 countries have adopted if you don't remember the names of these countries it will do for you do good for you but don't forget this thing that India is not a part of this agreement so it is ex excluding India okay as per this moment this point is very very important guys again I'm saying very important because this is summing up the entire uh, objective of this Clyde Bank declaration that is to create six green shipping corridors okay so do remember the number now what are green shipping corridors first of all understand this thing that majority of the trade the transportation of the cargo 90 percent of the world trade or the transportation of the cargo from one country to another uh, country takes place through shipping okay and thus shipping accounts for a major proportion of global carbon emissions and therefore we need to control it now the ships are at present run on diesel so diesel is a fossil fuel now under this declaration basically green shipping corridors will be established green shipping corridors would be maritime routes from one port to another port and on those routes all the ships that will be run on those corridors will be powered by green energy that is the basic idea behind this green shipping corridors using green energy in fueling the supply in fueling the ships in ships okay basically that is the idea so six green shipping corridors will be established under this Clyde Bank declaration and India being a developing country has refrained from doing so because it will also have a bearing on our trade also and at present the government is focusing the state of India we can say is focusing on increasing the exports and if we invest a major chunk of our money on creating green shipping corridors then obviously it is going to impact our trade and thus our GDP will be impacted so at present the focus is on increasing exports but also we should focus on creating green shipping corridors and transitioning towards clean energy that also we are doing at some ways in some ways we can say the next point here is that this Clyde Bank declaration aims to support or complement the zero emission shipping mission now this mission was launched in July 2021 this year only okay and it was launched by Denmark Norway and US and the basic purpose was to green the shipping industry okay use the green energy in shipping industry so make the shipping industry net zero emission by 2050 now this is the basic point i have already told you you need to know that already there is an international convention for the prevention of pollution from ships which is known as marpol already exists this agreement already exists to control the pollution but as we all know this is not very effective in controlling the uh, marine pollution coming out from the shipping industry therefore we created this declaration now my question from you is in which year was this marpol adopted this is your task tell me in the comment section below next point here is that how can we green the shipping corridors or green the uh, shipping industry so we can shift to alternate renewable resources like wind hydro solar biofuel green hydrogen etc etc so there are many uh, alternatives present at this moment for renewable energy so we can shift to that in order to make the green shipping industry uh, clean and green next question is which indian state has won the inspiring regional leadership award yes this award was also given at the cop26 now Maharashtra is the only state from India that has got this award. This award was given at the under two coalition. So the awards have been given under this under two coalition, which is the network of states and regions committed to climate change. And basically this 
and the two coalition has more than 260 governments who represent 1.75 billion people and 50 percent of the global economy you can skip these facts but don't skip this okay this is important 260 governments are forming this under two coalition that aims to tackle the climate change and at the awards the inaugural awards of this under two coalition maharashtra became the only state from india to win this inspiring leadership regional leadership award do remember this is an important question for you in your uh, rbn award you can expect a question out of this in your upcoming exam next question is in which city did the minister of jal shakti uh, gajendra singh shikhawat launched the global exhibition and an outreach platform named as ganga connect so you have many cities and let me inform you that all of these cities are in scotland only so now can you tell me which city is it okay so let me tell you uh, that no not all of these cities are in uh, scotland cardiff is in wales it's the capital of wales apart from this all of these are the scotland cities okay so this was launched at cardiff only wales is the right answer apart from this there is nothing much for explanation in this news because it was just a program that was launched at uk in uk in order to inform about the rich culture of india and the importance of river ganga there okay let's have a look at some other initiatives as well that have recently come out of cop26 only so first one is that there was a glacier in antarctica and that glacier has been renamed as glasgow glacier okay so that is one news now apart from this there are many glaciers that have been renamed in antarctica all of these glaciers are in uh, in antarctica and they have been named after these cities okay because here major un climate meetings were held these names are registered in the composite gazette here of antarctica this is a very basic point next announcement is that united nation environment program is planning to open its office in india so again this was an information that you should be aware of next is important that isa has signed an agreement with united nations framework convention on climate change uh, to fight the uh, climate change basically so both of these organization will collaborate and create uh, activities that will help in fighting the climate change that is the whole purpose of signing this agreement so guys that was all ab all about the initiatives that have been launched at the cop26 i hope that you have understood it well and if you like the content then do not forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much